In this video, I'll show you how I embroider a puffy font with paws. It looks really cool in person, and I think you'll be able to see its charm on video too. At the end of the video, I'll also show you how I assemble a bag on a sewing machine. I hope you like it. Of course, I'm committed to the in-the-hoop design, and I'll definitely make it in such a way that it's easy to do using just an embroidery machine. I also wanted to play around with the sewing machine a bit and brush up on my skills. Here we can see that the puffy font looks very impressive up close, and it's so delicate you'll want to touch the paws. For the base, I chose a dense cotton fabric, or at least I think so. Honestly, I'm not sure where this piece came from. I didn't mark where my embroidery will go, but I highly recommend printing your future word on a printer and marking the embroidery spot to save your foam before embroidering. It's simple. You place the puffy stitch font into the hoop and embroider your word all together. If you're using different colors for the letters and paws, like red, then you can choose a matching foam for that element. For example, if the paws are black, use black foam. If the letters are white, use white foam. It's generally recommended to match the thread and foam colors, like pink threads with pink foam. You might not always find the exact match, so just try to choose a close color. It's not a big deal. For production, they mainly use either white or black foam, though high-end productions might match the color exactly. You can see how I peel off the foam. Since this was a test, I made the paws a bit denser afterwards, which made the foam even easier to remove. I felt that the stitching wasn't dense enough, but even with that, after steaming and heating, I achieved a great result, and my gift will be really cool. For the black foam, for a black word with black threads, I used black foam that was thinner than two millimeters. I simply doubled it up, and I ended up with a four millimeter thick layer. I use foams from different brands, and I noticed that this no-name brand, which is black, peels off better and much more efficiently. I definitely recommend using foam specifically designed for embroidery because manufacturers have engineered it to withstand washing, wearing, and drying without losing its plush shape. Craft foam likely won't work as well. It might flatten or peek out from under the stitches after a hot wash. Regarding washing and temperature settings, please check the specific instructions in the foam care instruction because the foam is more delicate than the threads. Typically, a gentle wash at 30 degrees Celsius without using a tumble dryer is advisable. I've washed my items this way, and they have maintained their original condition. The maximum iron temperature to generate a lot of steam is crucial, but it's important to test this on your product first to ensure it won't shrink or get damaged. Definitely do not iron directly or press the iron onto the fabric. Use the steam generator function instead. This method allows you to apply steam without direct contact, helping to shape and set the embroidery without risking heat damage to the material or embroidery foam. To remove excess foam, I use my steam generator iron, which works very well. Some people also use a heat gun, but I don't have one available, so I manage just fine with my iron. Please be careful and don't overlook the process. Thoroughly steam the area, using as much steam as possible to ensure that the paws and letters achieve a beautiful finish. Steaming effectively helps to set the embroidery and in, in the video, you see how I make a small bag by folding two layers of fabric, stitching along the edges and then cutting them out. For the lining, I chose a pink fabric to make it visually striking and cut it to the same size as the main fabric of the bag. I sew the zipper to the top, attaching it in one go to both the lining and the main fabric. Then I sew the
the zipper on the other side in a similar fashion, securing it with a single line of stitching through both the main fabric. Brick and the lining. After sewing the zipper, I fold the main fabric onto itself and the lining onto itself, aligning the edges and sewing them together. I leave a small opening in the lining so that I can turn the bag right side out through this opening. I wanted to try making a bag on a sewing machine to compare how quickly it can be sewn compared to an embroidery machine. I still can't decide definitively because the Nazai Hop project doesn't require taking my machine out of its drawer. Everything is done on the embroidery machine. Usually, it turns out neat and pretty. But when sewing on a regular sewing machine, you really need to use some sewing skills, which unfortunately can fade over time if you don't sew frequently. I hope you enjoy the video and please feel free to ask any questions.